anything more than that is murder. This man has like 40 slides. And he went through most of them. And he made total sense. And none of you are bored. That's incredible. Okay? Uh, of course, glory to God. But can we give it up for Mr. Francisco? Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. And if you think opening for a man like this is hard, try closing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually telling Mr. Francis Kong earlier that uh, of all the accolades that have been lavished on him by our able hostess, uh, to me, the greatest compliment I can pay him is simply this. The man does not age. I mean, if that's 12 years ago, look at him now. Has he changed? Diba? Wala. Salamin lang nagbago eh. Yan po ba yung company big? <laughs> okay, well, um, if you saw the poster, basically everything he said were the ingredients to the recipe of what we want to enjoy, which is a great life. Right? And I hope your hands were quick enough to take notes or to take pictures of those slides but we want that PowerPoint, and we want it now. <laughs> uh, grabe, grabe. So, I, 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 no, wala masabi. But just, actually, I knew it was going to be like this, so I have only three slides. I'm not going to bore you. That's the first slide, by the way. The second slide is the verse. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim, my only aim, my only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. The man speaking is the cross-cultural uh, Renaissance man, the Apostle Paul, who embraced Hebrew, Greek, and a Roman civilization for all the accomplishments. The guy wrote half the New Testament, planted most of the first century churches, and he has this multicultural background but as far as he's concerned, his life can be distilled to one thing. Fulfilling God's purpose for his life. Do you know what God's purpose is for your life? I'm not asking you what your purpose is. For most of us, probably our purpose is to make money. Diba? Because we and the seven dwarfs have the same theme song. I owe, I owe. <laughs> so off to work, diba? But beyond that, ano ba talaga yung great, ano ba yung big picture ng buhay natin? Alam ba natin kung bakit tayo binigyan ng Panginoon ng gantong talento, gantong akenan, kung ba tayo tinago ng Panginoon sa gantong industriya? No? Sabi Sir Francis, what, what, what year does your son start learning how to walk? One year, two years, three years. I'm 51, I still don't know how to walk. I'm still learning. Um, but one thing I'm also discovering, um, and many of you know this already, my, my testimony is that I was given up for adoption. To this day, I don't know who my real parents are. And I could have landed anywhere, could have been anybody, but by the grace of God, I am who I am today. And when I look back at the many times that people gave up on me and I could have given up on myself, I'm amazed and I'm blessed and I'm grateful that God's purpose for me is that in my weakness, His strength would be made perfect. That I get to do this by the grace of God. Um, he mentioned Eric Little. Eric Little was a fast runner, but he was also called to be a missionary. And his sister confronted him. What are you doing? Running, running, running. You're supposed to be a missionary. And that there's that one scene in the movie that I love. He says, you know what? I know God made me for a purpose. He made, he made me to be a missionary to China. But he also made me fast. And I love what he says next. He says, And when I run, I feel his pleasure. Do you realize that your skills, your talents, your giftings are a clue to God's ultimate purpose for your life? 
And it's not so you can make a name for yourself. It's not so you can acquire and have the appearance and have the accomplishments. But it's so that when you discover why God put those skills and talents and abilities there, you can turn around and use them all to bring glory back to the God who, he, who entrusted them to you. The question is, are you doing that? Are you living for that end? Or are you still living for yourself? See, the great life is only great when the center of it is not you, but Jesus. Amen? Amen? Anybody can become a celebrity, especially in today's social media crazy world. You can have your own YouTube channel, you can have your own Facebook page, you can self-promote yourself to death. I mean, I just realized, wouldn't it be funny if one of these days, a guy finally takes a selfie before he takes his last breath. Mamamatay na lang, mag-Facebook post pa. Diba? That's the final post. The end. And then he dies. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody actually chooses to end their life that way. But the question is, when you do, who gets the glory? Who gets the final applause? I don't know about you, but a friend of mine put it to me this way. If we must live for the applause, let us live for the applause of the nail-pierced hand. Kung magpapapalakpakan na rin lang daw, nawapalakpakan ka ng mga kamay na binutas ng pato ng krus ng kalbaryo. Sapagat siya hindi na buhay para sa sarili niya, na buhay at namatay siya para sa atin. And the, le the, the, the least and the greatest thing we can do is to take this life and turn it around and live it for Him. The Apostle Paul said, my only aim is to finish the race and to complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. Kaya nga, Lord, eh, hindi ikaw masusunod siya. And so, bottom line, it is only when we live or aim for the fulfillment of the purpose of our great God for our life, then and only then, are we truly going to live a great life. Because in the end, it's not about us. It's about Him. I know many of you came here to hear a great man. But I would really love to know that you would live here having a relationship with a great God. Let's pray. Father God, we give you all the honor and all the praise. We thank you for our brother and for his generosity in sharing the years of wisdom that you have entrusted to him and he has so capably communicated with all of us. And through all this, Lord, I pray that the one truth that we would distill from everything we've heard tonight is that you, Lord, are the great God with a great purpose for our life. And it is only when we live for you that our life will truly be great. If you have never been given this chance before, and you would like to take that life and live it for the great God, would you pray this prayer with me in your heart? Just pray this prayer with me. Mean it with all of your heart. Say it to the great God. Father God, I thank you for your great love for me. I thank you for sending your son Jesus to live and die and rise again so that I may live and die and rise with him. Be the Lord of my life. I yield to you. I surrender to your lordship. I come under your kingdom. Let your kingdom come in my life that your will may be done by my life. That your name may be glorified on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for salvation in Christ. And thank you that tonight is the first day of my life with you. 
Help me, Lord, to live for you from now on. Now let me pray for you. Father, for everyone who agreed with that prayer in their heart of hearts, I pray, fill them with the peace of Christ. Indeed, let your kingdom come. Indeed, let your will be done in our lives and through our lives. That your name may be made even greater. That we would live for your glory alone. Lord, we also pray for our brother Francis and his family. Lord, we thank you for their faithfulness to your call upon their life. We thank you, Lord, that you have built up a household of faith. That you have given our brother a loving wife and children that know you and love you and follow you. And Lord, we pray that you would continually bless them. That you would continually guide them. That you could, would continually establish the work of their hands. Grant our brother more strength and more stamina to, con to conduct these amazing talks that he does. And in every talk, Lord, may it bear much fruit for your kingdom by way of the souls that would be saved, that would become the part of your kingdom as they hear the truth and surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We give you praise and glory for everything that's been said.